How do we counter the strong delusion of our day? We'll talk about it for the hour. So behold, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Now try to imitate that twinkling of an eye. It's fast. In other words, the, the rapture is not going to be a slow process when everybody's going to see a wow, loud look at. No, with a twinkling of an eye. Boom. We're going to be gone. We're going to be changed. Welcome to Understanding the Times Radio with Jan Markell. We will hit multiple topics with several guests this hour. First up is Amir Sarfati from Behold Israel, one of our conference speakers, September 21. Jan caught up with him in Austria. Later in the hour, we change topics and guests. But this program reminds us that end time strong delusion is the order of the day in the world and the church. Here is Jan Markell. And I need you to understand that God wants his children to know his plans. He, you know, uh, over the last couple of years, I've been invited to America so many times. I used to walk down the 8th and the 7th and the 6th and the 5th Avenue of Manhattan. And the one thing, second to Starbucks probably, that I saw there is psychic shops. I mean, people are so hungry and thirsty to know what will the future bring. There is some built-in desire in mankind to know the future. But God says in Isaiah 46 verses 9 and 10, Remember the former things long past, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. And then he says, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things which have not been done. God not, is not hiding. You don't have to go to a, a little tiny room with an ugly woman or man telling you what is going to happen to you. When you can just turn to the word of God in the daylight and it's all there. And welcome to the program. Well, we're going to talk about some of those issues for the first segment of the program today. And you know, for the last couple of months, I've tried to feature my various conference speakers for Understanding the Times 2019. I want to spend the first half of the program today with Amir Sarfati. Actually, I've caught up with him this time in Austria. And Amir has been at my annual conference yearly starting in 2015. He is an author, an international Bible and prophecy teacher, an Israeli tour guide, conference speaker, founder of the ministry known as Behold Israel. We'll give that website just a little bit later. And here's where I want to go in this segment, folks, because Satan hates the topic we're going to cover for the next few minutes. Because eschatology or Bible prophecy, it encourages believers. It is a warning to unbelievers. It is our only hope. Satan is reminded that his time is limited and he is doomed. It outlines the believer's glorious future. It helps us live holy in an unholy age. It is a witnessing tool. And frankly, it counters the strong delusion that believers must deal with daily, the insanity of our world today. Amir Sarfati, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Jan. It's a pleasure. You know, the other thing that's going on, though, talking about the importance of this topic, is the attack on it, the scoffing, the mocking. It's just simply off the chart. Some of the false teaching and false theologies within the stream of thought. Your thoughts on that? Well, I think that we know scoffers and mockers, yeah. even the New Testament talked about it, and this is one of the characteristics of the last days. Whenever these things happen, we shouldn't be surprised. In fact, we should be encouraged that it is one more confirmation that we indeed live in the last days. That's true. Nevertheless, it's sad. It's sad that most of the opposition to the idea even of the rapture comes from within the church. People who come up with the idea that maybe the rapture is a new, modern theology that started by someone. You know, I didn't even know that, that mm. uh, modern teachers started teaching that only recently. I took it from the Bible. I took course, it from, course. from the scriptures. It's, it's sad. We need to be very, very strong, and we need to keep teaching and not lower our guard and pray that the Lord will continue to give us the strength to withstand the opposition, mostly from within, 
and continue to spread that word because this word is the word of encouragement and hope that the people around the world need to hear. If you wake up in the morning and you think this is it, that's as good as it can get, that's what God has for you and this is it, then I'm telling you it's the most depressing thing you can ever get from a message that, by the way, is completely different in the Scriptures. I mean, I'm thinking about Paul. Look at the opposition that Paul had to go through from within and from outside, and yet he loved to dwell on the things which are above. He commanded us, if indeed you were raised with Christ, then seek those things which are above. That is the theme of my conference, September 21st. You didn't know that. I didn't tell you that, but that verse is the theme of the conference. No, you didn't. didn't. You didn't know. Wow. Recently, I started teaching those messages. Oh, it's wonderful. Because you've been doing an incredible amount of travel in some very unusual places, particularly your trip to Indonesia. Let's set Indonesia aside for just a minute because you've been to some other places where the church is plentiful in Australia, New Zealand, parts of Europe may not be quite like the church in North America. But I want to ask you this. What are you hearing from believers in some of these more faraway places? Do they feel isolated? Do they have any effective church fellowship? How do they stay up to date on things? How do these believers stay encouraged? I have a burden for them, and I'm wondering if you can direct your answers to some of those questions. It's interesting, Jan, because throughout my traveling, I am encouraged as well as discouraged. And let me explain. I'm encouraged to see that it doesn't matter where on the globe, on planet Earth, I go. It is the same Mm -hmm. hunger that I see and the same lack of food that people get in their churches when it comes to the healthy teaching of the Word. And absent from the pulpits, the message of the soon return of Christ and the rapture of the church and the Bema seat and the return of Christ with us to reign for thousands, these things are completely being ignored. And even prominent churches with very nice attendance, I mean, people just don't get it. And then they're hungry and they're thirsty. So it encourages me to see that like-minded people are all around the world. The people of God are thirsty Mm -hmm. for the Word of God, and they are, as Jesus said, for those who eagerly wait for Him, He will come for the second time, this time, to redeem them for the salvation of the body. Even by saying that, he made a distinction, Paul made a distinction. He will return to take those who eagerly expect Him, wait for Him, and long for His return. Unfortunately, and now comes the part that is discouraging, unfortunately, it is a very small percentage Mm -hmm. of the people that call themselves Christians. And it doesn't matter if it's the church in Indonesia that is a very small percentage of the population there that Mm -hmm. is mostly Muslim, and it doesn't matter if it's countries that supposedly on the paper are Christians, such as Australia and New Zealand. In fact, it's even more depressing there, because people are supposed to be Christians, but they have more blindness to the Word of God and the idea of the return of Christ than people in places that Christianity is almost non-existent. Always yeah, seems it, it, to get down to a remnant of believers, and maybe it was that way in early church days as well, a remnant of followers back then. I was thinking about it, about how was it 2,000 years ago? 2,000 years ago, remember, that was a brand new idea to the Jewish people. For them, Messiah has to come, has to bring peace, prosperity, temple, and all of that. And so they're still waiting for him, which means for them the idea of a second coming does not even appear in the radar, because they are still waiting for the first. But then the Gentiles throughout the world that just heard for the first time that there is one God only, and God loves them so much that he sent his only begotten son. They already believe in the atoning death of the Messiah. They only believe that he is up there in heaven. I'm trying to think, okay, how is it that they were believing and hoping and praying for his soon return to take them? And it seems to me that the more persecuted the church is going to be, the more they will long for his return to take Mm -hmm. them. And what Satan is very masterfully doing in the last 2,000 years is basically taking that hope 
out of the pulpits. So Christians will try to make the most out of this life here right. on earth your right best now. Life now. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Live your life, do whatever you can. And that, of course, brings so many false teachings and false yeah. doctrines, such as the doctrine of prosperity yeah. and the hyper grace. Kingdom that, now, church will make the exactly. world perfect. Folks, you're listening to Understanding the Times Radio, Jan Markell here. I have on the line, I've caught up with him in Austria, Amir Sarfati, Behold Israel, beholdisrael.org. Sign up for his various electronic updates. You want to get on his e-newsletter list, beholdisrael.org, and get his YouTube updates as well, because he does those once or twice a week and brings you the very latest in what's happening. Let me just ask you a quick question, Amir, and that would be, What do you feel, and we don't have to be real specific, but in generalities, the greatest issue of our day that is a signal that time is short? I mean, we have some options. We've got Mideast alignment. We've got apostasy in the church. We've got Israel is flourishing now. She's the eighth most powerful nation in the world. We've got the rise in strong delusion. We've got the rise in artificial intelligence. And I opened the program with a clip of you walking the streets of New York City and you're coming to psychic shops because people, they want to know the future. And I think that's significant. They're going all the wrong places to try to know the future. I think it's significant that mankind does want to know the future. Is there something that you are seeing today that would just leap out at you and say, aha, this is a sign of the times? I named the ministry Behold Israel because to me... Israel is the biggest sign. Mm -hmm. To me, what is going on with Israel, not just generally in the Middle East, in Israel in particular, to me, this is the fig tree that comes back. That's why Jesus had to pause when he gave the whole Olivet Discourse, and he had to pause in his description of world events and global catastrophes and all of those things, and he had to address that particular thing and To that, he talked about the generation that shall not pass away. About that, he says, then you know that it's near, it's at your doorpost. To me, the rebirth of Israel and the transformation that happened in this place from a place that nobody wanted to deal with, people stayed away from, a place that, it's funny, but I'm studying right now for my message at your conference. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I'm going to address is the amazing prophetic changes in the Middle East, as with Russia, Iran, and Turkey. And it's interesting that these are the three closest friends of Israel during its early days. As long as we were, what? Helpless, weak, and poor, and meaningless, we were their friends. Look what happened. Look at the transformation of this country and how these countries that we just talked about completely changed their mind Mm -hmm. and changed their faith and changed their relations with Israel right now. And it's because we are at the very, very end. The whole world is reacting. It's almost like an allergic reaction to what is going on with Israel because it doesn't make sense. Nothing in this country makes sense. Nothing in this region makes sense. You can clearly see the footprints and the handprints and God is everywhere in all that is going on here. He is not for a single second. I cannot see where God left this place since we returned Mm. and said, okay, I'm done with them. This is why teachings such as of John Piper that this current Israel is the adulterous Israel, and therefore the Jewish people today have no spiritual rights over their land. This type of thing is such a heresy because he is blinded to what are, God is doing with Israel and through Israel, regardless whether they believe or not. We could give a lineup of people who seem to be blinded. Sadly, they're prominent Christian leaders. Right. Folks, I want to invite you to come on out Saturday, September 21st. There still are tickets. They're only $25, and that includes a lunch. At Grace Church, Eden Prairie, Minnesota, that's a suburb of Minneapolis, Minnesota, our 23rd event. And if you've got tickets and you can't attend, don't just hang on to them or hang on to your receipt. Just call Brush Fire and say, you know what, something came up. So I'm turning them in so that someone else can get those tickets. And you can go to brushfire.com as well. J.D. Farag, Dr. Robert Jeffress, Pastor Jack Hibbs, Lori Cardoza-Moore, yours truly, others will be present. 
and Amir, my guest of this particular segment of Understanding the Times Radio. Amir, I played a message of yours a couple of weeks ago. It happens to be my favorite message that I've heard you give, and I think I've heard 90% of your messages. And it was titled, Europe, Ready for the Antichrist. And it seems that the dark world is getting more bold. And you and I both have messages that talk about this. I already cited yours. You even gave a follow-up message where you pointed out that the seat of Satan actually seems to be right in Berlin. We referenced both your message and mine, the gotthard based tunnel ceremony of 2016, a satanic ceremony. We're not being conspiratorial here at all. Satan is increasing his activity as his time winds down. You and I, we're not trying to scare anyone. We're trying to prepare them, as these are indicators that the time to choose Jesus Christ may be running out. Exactly. We see those things happening all around us. We know the schemes of the devil. Yeah. That's why he hates us, because we expose him everywhere we go. Everywhere we go, we understand the times, we understand the seasons, we understand the plans of God, the hope that we have through Christ and the soon return of Christ to take us. And at the same time, we also see through all that Satan is doing. And in fact, I'm working now on a message called The Great Collusion, in light of all the talks about Russia. Yeah, collusion. Russian. I'm speaking about the Great Collusion, and the collusion that started in the heavenlies with angels that joined Lucifer to replace God, then in Genesis 6, reflected on earth also, as that same spirit came down on earth and filled earth with so much evil that God thought, okay, there's no reason to leave anyone alive anymore. And then, of course, thankfully, verse 8 says, but Noah. But we can clearly see that which was in heaven was injected in such a skillful way to people that, thankfully, God gave them the free will, because otherwise they would never be able to love God and worship Him in spirit and in truth. But at the same time, that free will allowed them also to choose something else. That's what free will is all about. It's your right. free will. Yep. And by the power of the free will that they had, unfortunately, they actually chose to believe the schemes of the devil. And instead of relying on the spirit, they relied on the flesh. And instead of looking up to the Lord and calling upon the name of the Lord, the Bible tells us, if I'm not mistaken, in Genesis 5, that the sons of Enos actually called upon the name of the Lord. The first believers in the history were the sons of, after Seth came Enos and his sons. And by the way, in the Hebrew, we don't say humans. In the Hebrew, we say sons of Enosh. That's what we say, the Hebrew language. And it's interesting because you can see that those people who now can be called sons of God because they follow God, they believe in God, they long for God. And you can clearly see when they follow the sight of their eyes, and the lust of their flesh, we can see the results. The falling away started yeah. there. And you know, the Hebrew word for nephilim is from the Hebrew word to fall away, to fall. We will always fall when we don't walk in the Spirit and when we don't trust the Lord and His Word. Yeah. That which started then continues in full speed today. We see the attack on every aspect of our life to somehow ridicule the believers and to somehow promote godless and antichrist and very, very Luciferian yeah. ideas. Luciferian ideas. There's also an attack on the rapture of the church. Before our time gets away, I want to throw in here one more heads up here I'm on the September 21st event that it is live streamed at no cost. You just have to go to our website, September 21st, olivetreeviews.org, views as in viewpoint, olivetreeviews.org. It's live stream central time. So keep that in your minds. If you're East Coast, it's going to be a different time. West Coast, different time. It's live stream central time. Amir, our time is winding down. You mentioned the attack. The attack on the rapture of the church is stunning. I mean, there's great contention over it today. I've already referenced the mocking of the whole topic. There's arguing going on. If you hold to what you and I believe, premillennial, pre-trib dispensationalism, we're cultists. Well, that wasn't true. Even 30 years ago wasn't true. There are videos made mocking us by name. 
These people have turned our blessed hope into the blasted hope. It's one of your favorite topics, one of my favorite topics, because it's the only hope in a hopeless world. But the attack on it is just stunning and staggering. Yeah, and it's very sad that people are being sold the idea that we can bring heaven to earth. Heaven to earth. Rather than we should go to heaven and be rescued out of earth. They claim it's a new idea, yet Jesus himself said, I'm going to prepare a place for you, and then I'll be back, and I will receive you unto myself. So where I am, not where you are, where I am, you will also be. Those who change address, it's us, not him. He's right now at the right hand of the Father, and he's taking us to where he is, not coming to where we are. In fact, our meeting place is not even on earth. We come halfway, he comes halfway. Mm -hmm. He's taking us to be with him. This is the hope he gave to the disciples. This is the hope he gave them before he left. He wanted them to know, look, the only hope you have is that I will return. I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I will give you the Holy Spirit. But I want to tell you something. I'm not disappearing. I'm preparing a place for you. Now, why would he prepare a place for us there unless we need to go there and be there and spend time with him there? It's so sad to me that the idea of the rapture is being held as a fairy tale where it's embedded in the words of Jesus to Martha and in the words of Jesus to the disciples before he left. To Martha, he says, I'm the resurrection and the life. Why did he say that? Talking about those who died that will resurrect and those who are still alive. He says, he who believes in me, if he died, he will live again. And if he is alive, he will not die. This is a description that you see in 1 Thessalonians 4 and in 1 Corinthians 15. This is the description of the rapture. Mm -hmm. So to me, I'm thinking to myself, how come the words of Jesus and then the words of the Apostle Paul are today being held as some sort of new theory that started only in recent years. Yeah, 1830 maybe. You know what? You may call me uneducated. My entire teaching on the rapture started without even knowing the 1800s teachings. Yeah, John Nelson Derby. I took it from the scriptures. Of course. Yeah, Derby, yeah, I know, but I didn't even know about that. I looked at the scriptures. To me, the scriptures were always telling the believers of that blessed hope. I didn't need Derby to tell me that the Bible is true. And trust me, most believers that have that blessed hope, they do not lean on Derby's teachings. I didn't even know the guy. They only quote Bible verses. It's the scriptures that are under attack. It's not anything else. We are under attack as a result of the attack on scriptures. I think that's a good way of putting it, Amir. I've been talking to Amir Sarfati for this first segment of our programming. He heads Behold Israel, beholdisrael.org. Again, one of my speakers coming up here really in just a few days. Saturday, September 21st, just outside of Minneapolis. Go to olivetreeviews.org to check on tickets. Ticket does include a lunch. And again, other speakers, pastors J.D. Farag, Robert Jeffress, Jack Hibbs, Myself, Lori Cardozamore, and others, almost one-third of the Bible, between 27 and 30 percent of the Bible, well, it's oriented towards talking about the future, future events, things that are going to happen, our eternal home, heaven, the millennium, the judgment seat of Christ, all of that takes almost one-third of the Bible. And yet, as we've been talking to Amir, and as I talk to my other guests every week on Understanding the Times Radio, they will all tell you that, for some reason, today's church has just decided to focus on issues of today rather than the future. And that is heartbreaking, to say the least, because God doesn't want us to be confused about our future, because it is a glorious future, literally down to about 30 seconds, Amir. It's all yours to wrap up. Well, I just wanted to encourage people, first of all, apart from encouraging them to attend the conference, which is a life-changing thing. And by the way, my hosts right now in Vienna Hmm. are going to be in the conference. I heard that. Wonderful. Yeah, these are my hosts. And you have people coming all over from Europe as well. I do. But I wanted you to know, I want everyone to know, as we just said, the Bible says, Jesus said, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. And the attack is on the truth. The attack is on the Word of God. We need to stay strong. We need to stick together, not attack each other. And we need to hold on to that promise. This is what we have to sell to the world. Yes, Jesus died for our sins, but that's not the end. Jesus promised to come and take us. 
That's the beautiful thing. After the death of Christ on the cross and the payment for our sins, now what? Mm. What's next? Is that all? Is that over? Are we stuck in this world forever like that? No, there's a great place awaiting for all of us. And then when we get back to this world, we'll be changed already. We'll be already the bride of Christ. We'll be already governors. Yes, yes we'll, we'll be, be ruling and reigning. Rulers, exactly. Yes. Yeah, exactly. We're changing topics in just a couple of minutes, folks. Don't go away. Amir, thank you so much. See you very soon in just a few days now. God bless you, my friend. We'll see you soon. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. We so enjoy hearing from our listeners. You can always write us through our website, olivetreeviews.org. That's olivetreeviews.org. You can call us Central Time at 763-559-4444. That's 763-559-4444. We are available by mail by writing Olive Tree Ministries and Jan Markell at Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. That's Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. All gifts are tax deductible. You can also text to give. Check our website for details. Jan changes topics for our second segment. Please stay tuned. Welcome to Understanding the Times 2018. Pia, you're all the way from Switzerland. Why in the world would you come from Switzerland to to Minnesota to this conference? It was for me important to be together with so many people which have the same hope. Dan, you got up early this morning to be here. What compelled you? Um, Just to come to Jan's conference to hear Jan and the wonderful speakers that she brings in every year to put, sort of put the book of Revelations into contemporary times. Been following Jan for about the past year. She is such a blessing, very informative of what's going on in our world through a biblical lens. The biggest thing was being with over 6,000 people, learning about the end times, and just being of like mind. Understanding the Times 2019 is around the corner, Saturday, September 21, just outside of Minneapolis. You have your tickets yet? If not, call the Brush Fire Agency at 1-888-338-5338. That's 1-888-338-5338. Or just go online to brushfire.com. We are selling general admission tickets for $25, and that includes a lunch. If you have purchased a ticket and cannot attend, please turn in your ticket to Brush Fire so others can purchase them. Speakers include Dr. Robert Jeffress, Amir Sarfati, Pastor J.D. Farag, Pastor Jack Hibbs, Jan Markell, and Lori Cardoza-Moore. We begin at 8.45 a.m. on September 21 and conclude at 5 p.m. The destination is Grace Church in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, near Minneapolis. Even hotels are selling out, so visit our website, olivetreeviews.org, and go to our conference page for hotel information. If you cannot journey to Minneapolis, the event will be live streamed at no cost. Consult our website for details. Come and meet 5,000 like-minded remnant believers on Saturday, September 21. Learn why things aren't falling apart, they are falling into place. These folks encouraged her to speak out to Eleanor Roosevelt to be able to get information. In fact, they took her to the solarium and uh, the rooftop of the White House. We won't revisit all that again. But also, they were speaking to Mahatma Gandhi, supposedly. Now, these are dead people. The scripture is so clear about this, and we need to put this in perspective for the Christians listening. We're only to receive information from one source. Right. We're only to speak to one source in the spirit realm. That is, to God the Father, by the Holy Spirit, through His Son, Jesus Christ. That's it. In this segment, Jan welcomes two familiar voices to discuss more strong delusion. It just may be that you are called of God to be an early warning system for people in high places who are dancing with demons. Jill Martin Rishi and Eric Barger join Jan and all have a serious warning. New Age High Priestess Marianne Williamson is now running for President of the United States. How did we get to a place where demonic philosophies are welcomed in among national and international leaders? Here's Jen Markell, Jill, and Eric. 
For Marianne Williamson to break through, it's going to have to be her connection on a spiritual level, even more than a political level. This is an entirely different message, an entirely different candidate, an entirely different background. And she's going to have to appeal to people on a plane that, frankly, most politicians don't or can't. Williamson is aware of just how unconventional her aspirations are. What kind of negative feedback have you heard so far? Who is she? Who does she think she is? She has no experience in government. I'm a 66-year-old woman. I'll take on any of these people for the kind of experience I've had in my life that I think is relevant to what America needs today. She says she's taking the inner peace she's taught for years to heart as she prepares for the challenges ahead. How tough is this going to be for you? I assume very tough at times. It's a emotional and psychological challenge as well as a, an organizational challenge, financial challenge. You have to raise so much money. It's not going to be easy, but exciting to be part of the game, to be in there. I feel I'm where I should be. Let us make this a more beautiful world. I'm ready for this, ladies and gentlemen. Please join with me. Let's lay this down. Thank you very much. And welcome back. Well, we have an interesting second half of the program today. I recently saw a headline online a few weeks ago, how Hillary's seances led to the rise of the left's New Age guru. That New Age guru would be mystic Marianne Williamson, Democrat presidential candidate for 2020. I'm not sure she will progress very far, and she was not in the most recent debate. But that's not the point. Not the point at all. Her shady character is certainly not standing in the way of her many fans and even a lot of money that she's raised. And she has been the high priestess of what is known as a course in miracles. This is more New Age psychobabble produced by a woman called Helen Shookman. This is a book that was channeled, Shookman would say, by Jesus Christ. We would say by a demon. Marianne Williamson had reportedly participated in some of Hillary Clinton's White House seances. We've referred to that and will continue to. And Hillary had met her at a fundraiser where the New Age guru made such an impression that she was invited to stay in the Lincoln bedroom. How does New Age philosophy fit into the totalitarian, utopian, well, the progressive left wants for America and the world. How does Marianne Williamson's doctrine of the demons fit into this picture? Well, I'm going to talk about it with two guests in studio with me. One is Jill Martin Rishi, and the other is Eric Barger. Jill and Eric, thank you so much. And let me start quizzing the both of you, please, if I could. Jill, apparently your father, Dr. Walter Martin, was contending with this some 35 years ago. Yes, he was. A Course in Miracles was very popular back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and on up. And that's because the doctrine of the demons always speaks to the heart of a fallen man and fallen woman. They are in rebellion against God. So when you go to A Course in Miracles, it redefines everything about God and satisfies that rebellious direction that our hearts want to go in. A Course in Miracles was very influential, and it's all rooted, of course, like you say, in the talking with a demon, demonology, talking back and forth, channeling that information. And the Bible warned us about that a long time ago with mentioning the doctrine of the demons. So this is truly the doctrine of the demons. This is. This isn't subtle whatsoever. No. She redefines everything. Helen Shookman redefined everything the demon did in A Course in Miracles. And then along came Marianne Williamson a decade or two later, yes. and she kind of adopted it all and became the new high priestess of A Course in Miracles. So it continues to stick around and grow, and it redefines God, it redefines Jesus. He just becomes the Christ, the spark of divinity in all of us. She redefines the Holy Spirit, and this is what cults do in Unity, the Unity School of Christianity, is the foundation. Okay, so Unity School is the foundation. That's yes. important to know. Yes. Eric, you have uncovered, and actually we did radio on this a couple of years ago, you've uncovered the Clinton's connection to a lot of issues on the dark side, her connection to things, quite frankly, we can't even fully talk about here. Williamson influenced Hillary Clinton heavily. Eric, you say that Williamson swung two prominent women to New Age thinking, Hillary Clinton and Oprah Winfrey. Today, we have the gospel of Oprah, which many people embrace. 
Talk to us for just a minute about how Hillary Clinton fits into this. When she first ran into Marianne Williamson, she was also kind of alongside Jean Houston, another yes. psychic, and yes. she has a doctorate and is a psychologist. That's what her titles are, but she's a New Ager all the way. These folks encouraged her to speak out to Eleanor Roosevelt to mm-hmm. be able to get information. In fact, they took her to the solarium and uh, the rooftop of the White House. We won't revisit all that again. But also, they were speaking to Mahatma Gandhi, supposedly. Now, these are dead people. The scripture is so clear about this, and we need to put this in perspective for the Christians listening. We're only to receive information from one source. We're only to speak to one source in the spirit realm. That is, to God the Father, by the Holy Spirit, through His Son, Jesus Christ. That's it. In the case of A Course in Miracles, Helen Shookman claimed it was Jesus giving her the material, the information, but she didn't evidently have any way to know to test. And the scripture says we're to test everything. And what was given to Helen Shookman and now what has been popularized by Marianne Williamson, well, this is contrary to the scripture. Mrs. Clinton went right along with it. Mm-hmm. Oprah Winfrey helped to popularize her. In fact, I believe That's it's right. because of Oprah Winfrey, we now reap the benefits of having so many people who have followed the Course of Miracles and, of course, Marianne Williamson with it, but... That's the thing. And Mrs. Clinton thought this was great and went right along with these people who were leading her right into what can only be called seances. Folks, if you don't believe that, I'm going to play a clip here. Bill Clinton talking about his wife's involvement in a seance with Eleanor Roosevelt. I think all of the people who were introduced and those who were not introduced, all of whom have made their contributions to America many inspired by President Roosevelt. And a special thanks to the members of the Roosevelt family who are here, and to one who is not, Eleanor. I know that because as all of you famously learned when I served as President, my wife, now the Secretary of State, was known to commune with Eleanor on a regular basis. And so she called me last night on her way home from Peru to remind me to say that. that Eleanor had talked to her and reminded her that I should say that. All right. My conclusion is Marianne Williamson is not the first occultist to seek the White House. Clearly, Hillary Clinton did. We don't even know if there are some others. But Eric, this is so blatant. I'm sorry. Bill Clinton's bragging about these seances. That's incredible. And, you know, he used the word commune there. If you go to Snopes, which I don't trust at all, yeah. but if you go to Snopes, they called this a psychological exercise. Okay. And of course, that's a spin they put on it and said that only later on did people think. And they made uh, people that really believe in what the scripture says about these things. They made us look like we're nuts. But they said that this was really a psychological exercise and she really wasn't talking to Eleanor Roosevelt. Well, this isn't what was portrayed in the beginning, nor what Bill Clinton himself portrayed just a few years ago. Yeah. Jill, the background of Marianne Williamson is rooted These are your words in direct demonic inspiration. And you say, because you've done a little bit of study on this, that she agrees with Edgar Cayce. Let's just say who that is. Explain who Edgar Cayce is. Edgar Cayce was a very famous medium of the last century, very influential in spreading the power of mediumship. And he translated text after text from demons, communed with the demons, (laughs) He had an institute, very influential throughout America in the the 1900s. All right, so you say, rooted in direct demonic inspiration, you say she agrees with Edward Casey, Jane Mm -hmm. Roberts, and Eckhart Tolle, and Tolle's played a major role again with Oprah Winfrey, and these are all demon channelers. She was Mm -hmm. part of and promoted the Unity of School of Christianity, which is a cult, and Williamson has revived ancient Gnosticism as taught by the Unity cult today. You clued me in that your dad, Walter Martin, actually wrote a chapter on unity long ago, apparently in the Kingdom of the Cults. Yes, um, and we've restored that in the new edition of the Kingdom of the Cults, which is out now. So. Oh, it is out now. Yes, it's out now. Is the brand in, new edition. In bookstores now? Yes, it is. Christian uh-huh. bookstores. Yes. Kingdom of the Cults. Yes, the new edition. We included this chapter, the okay. Unity School of Christianity, and God has really been blessing this chapter. It literally okay. is in the top five under Unity, Jan, okay. under Unity wow. on Amazon, which you know it's not Christians going into Unity buying those books. God is using it as a great evangelism tool. Eric, you write this. You did this article. This is a number of years ago. And you say, let there be no doubt 
Now we're on Oprah Winfrey here. Let there be no doubt, Oprah Winfrey is finally out of the spiritual closet. She has completely thrown out any previous notion that she is a Christian. Now television's most influential woman has become the driving force in bringing Helen Shookman's 35-year-old trance-channeled, actually it's more like 45-year-old now, just because his article is a few years old. So you say, now television's most influential woman has become the driving force in bringing Helen Shookman's old trance-channeled book, A Course in Miracles, and New Age author Marianne Williamson into the mainstream. And then you say, not since Shirley MacLaine has any single person done so much to promote and normalize New Age mysticism to the public, as has Oprah. The connection between Oprah and Williamson is profound. And Williamson wasn't the only one. Gene Houston, who right. we mentioned a few minutes ago, yep. and Louise Hay, who the New York Times Magazine called the Queen of the New Age, they were also people that were on the program regularly, as others, Eckhart Tolle, as we've talked about, mm-hmm. and J- Jill mentioned, and Oprah really went out of her way to bring this stuff out. It's what she believed, and so it became the text that was used in the program a lot. If you just joined me, again, you're listening to Understanding the Times Radio, Jan Markell. I'm doing a segment on the presidential candidate, assuming she's going to stay in the race, though I know she's hurting for income and ratings, was not able to be in the last debate here just very, very recently. I just want to read a paragraph from what's called the New York Intelligencer. The magazine says, during and after the debate, this goes back to July now, a Democrat candidate's debate in Detroit, it was difficult to dismiss or ignore the previously dismissed and ignored Marianne Williamson. This periodical goes on to say she inspired a vast outpouring of Google searches and Twitter commentary. Objective handicappers of the debate thought she stood out. And then it says some focused on her bold, outspoken position on reparations. Others touted her very different tone from standard brand polls. Watch five minutes of either of the first two presidential debates that Williamson has participated in, and she stands out like a sore thumb. While the other nine candidates on stage are vying to interrupt one another at every turn and deliver their scripted talking points, Williamson is speaking in global and beyond terms, and then it concludes she also called out her peers as part of the corruption problem, thus inherently offering her outside celebrity status as proof she is beholden to no one. Does that sound familiar? Uh, Yeah, that sounds familiar. Eric, your thoughts? This is probably not the last time we're going to talk about a presidential candidate who has gotten into all kinds of stuff like this. Marianne Williamson became a pastor in the Unity School of Christianity in Michigan, right at the height of her popularity, too. But most people don't realize that she's not the only one in the Democratic side who is following Unity. It just goes on and on. Why don't we let the audience just hear what Marianne sounds like? You heard a little bit of her in that clip where she was talking about why she's going to run, and it's unconventional, and she says, let's make this a more beautiful world. Let's play this other clip. To make yourself fully available to God is not, does not mean that you believe in fairy tales and, and you're naive and you don't know what's going on on the planet. Quite the opposite. It's that you're so clear about what's going on on the planet that we must not tarry. We must not tarry a moment in the realms of the meaningless. We must not tarry one more moment in the realms of small-minded, narrow-minded, self-centeredness that has nothing to do with the miraculous. It, It has gone too far. The Course in Miracles says there is a limit beyond which the Son of God cannot miscreate. We have miscreated. We have miscreated on this planet. We've miscreated with our, with our systems, with our biological systems, with our bodies, with our relationships. But God's got this. But that doesn't mean we can say, okay, God will handle it because God cannot do for us what he cannot do through us. We need God. We need these higher energies to be able to heal the world. But the Course in Miracles says, just like we need God, God needs us. The healing of the world is a co creation. Jill, I spent literally a couple of hours trying to find a clip that would quite frankly make sense to my audience, just because this woman talks in cosmic psychobabble. That's the clearest one I could even find. And I'm finding that here she refers to the Son of God. 
That sounded sort of okay. The healing of the world is a co-creation. Obviously, that's filled with problems. Part of the gimmick, then, is to sound fairly biblical. Am I right? Absolutely. And that's what the cults excel in. And Unity School of Christianity is a cult. And it actually is rooted in Christian science, Mary Baker Eddy. They believe a lot of things really do not exist, including evil, which is kind of ironic because then if there is really none of that, then why do we need reparations, right? But this is one of her many contradictions. Anyway, she says that Jesus was not God, not the God, the son that the scripture teaches or the second person in the biblical trinity. No, he was a master teacher. And the word Christ is that spark of divinity. So Jesus was the one who best expressed that spark of divinity. So there you have the redefinement of terms. And that's what happens in every other cult system that comes along. What does she mean when she says God is the person across from you? Well, God is infinite mind. See, this is what they get from Christian science. And he is infinite mind that can be expressed in matter, as we talk about in the kingdom of the cult. So basically, he's your higher self, and it can be found everywhere, right? He is not a close, personal, loving individual. He's not the creator of everything and our father. He's not that at all. He is the love in every one, but he cannot love himself. So you're looking at a non-personal being. You're looking at something that cannot love in the same way that we look at God's kind of love. If you just join me talking for this segment with Eric Barger and Joel Martin Rishi, learn more about Eric at ericbarger.com. Learn more about Jill at waltermartin.com. Let me just quickly say, my conference is next weekend, folks. We're in a countdown here with days and even some hours left. Reminder that we're going to have CDs and DVDs of the event, Understanding the Times 2019, uh, end of October, roughly. Let me just say to you live streamers, give you a last minute heads up here. To stream the conference, you're going to visit olivetreeviews.org on Saturday, September 21st. Can't do it the day before, the day after, okay? Saturday, September 21st, Central Time. There'll be a button on the home page that will direct you to the Olive Tree Conference live streaming page where you'll be able to stream the event on your computer. Again, olivetreeviews.org, or you can watch it on YouTube as well. CDs and DVDs are end of October, roughly. My speakers include J.D. Farag, Robert Jeffress, Amir Sarfati, Jack Hibbs, yours truly, Lori Cardoza Moore. And come on out and meet my two guests for this segment, Eric and Jill. They'll be participating in Understanding the Times as well. Tickets still available. We still have some tickets left. They're $25, and they include a lunch. Eric and Jill, some conclusions I drew. Let's talk about them in the time we have left. And I have six bullet points. If we only get to a couple, that's fine. People with radical views are ascending to power. Obviously, even those with occultic philosophy. And worse yet, they are being accepted and even lauded. Far out philosophies that are celebrated are the new normal. I'm sorry, this has to be another sign of the times. Eric, I'm sure you would agree. Absolutely, it's a sign of the times. And like I said, this is going to happen again and again as we go on until the Lord comes. It's just the way it is. And I want to point something out to you, Jan, that even though in that clip you played, Marianne Williamson called God him. That doesn't match anything that she's written in her books, nor what she believed in unity. So don't be confused by Christian ease being used by New Agers. Okay. Absolutely. Some other conclusions I have come to. There are many who have tried to seduce the Western world, say in the last 35, 40 years and beyond. I do recall vividly Shirley MacLaine on the cover of Time magazine in the 1980s came out the cover image out on a limb. But again, there were others before her. We've referenced them, Helen Shookman, Jean Houston, Marianne Williamson, and Jill, we can't minimize the role here of Oprah Winfrey. We just can't. No, she's extremely influential. Now, she's more invisible than Mm -hmm. she used to be, but that doesn't mean that her influence isn't tremendous. For example, all you have to do is look over the last eight years with Barack Obama and how she came out and stood on stage with him. Why? Because even though she has played largely now behind the scenes, she is extremely influential and a lot of people still listen to her. Well, take her at her word that she's a Christian. We know that's not possible, but 
There's no fruit there. No, but she keeps telling people she was raised a Christian. Right. And, and then she comes out promoting, again, Eckhart Tolle and Marianne Williamson. And, oh, they get one kind of a whack job after another. And all of them somehow into the metaphysical, nothing into the Bible. Right. Which is a quick tip off. What is the takeaway here? There are some people listening to this segment. My hunch is very few of them agree with anything Marianne Williamson has to say. So, Eric, why are we even doing this? We need to be able to give friends and loved ones and those we meet or people at work or school answers. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't cut it for just to just say that something, and I've said this so many times, that's of the devil. Yes. It is. But we've got to be able to give them why. And Marianne Williamson she raised $1.5 million in three months toward her campaign with over 46,000 people giving. That doesn't happen in a vacuum. She has struck a popular nerve. And if we're going to be able to give answers about this on our local level with people who are in our local governments and our state and, of course, national, it's going to take facts and documentation. That's why we do what we do in apologetics whenever we do one of these programs, Jan. Well, I found it interesting that after the early debates, and they began midsummer, and there were a couple of them, and now another one which just passed, she was not able to be in that one. As I brought out in my intro, she was one of the most sought-after names through Google searches, etc. Obviously, whatever she said sparked something in some people, and they wanted to learn, who is this person? Why don't I know more about her? I want to know more about her. That's a scary thought. They're going after again another one of these New Age priestesses. Boy, it really is a scary thought. Because both of us searched yesterday looking for any clip we could play that would make sense. That's exactly. A scary thought. Exactly. Because you're absolutely right. I could not find one that our audience would be able to make sense out of just because of the psychobabble, Joel. Well, you know, you ask, why does this matter? It matters because it's an assault against Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It's assault against absolute truth. Jesus said, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. They cannot accept that. This is an assault against him. We must stand for absolute truth. If you do not have absolute truth, you have chaos. Let's kind of wrap this up. I think the point is, we have a real dark horse candidate here. She's an intriguing looking woman. She was raised Jewish, by the way. So when he starts talking about the Son of God, that kind of threw me as well. We know she's not referring to the true Son of God when she makes that reference. So how can we sum this up? Eric, I'm going to throw it to you, and then I'm going to send it back to Jill as we kind of wrap this up. Be ready always to give every man an yes. answer for the hope that lies within us. Be ready to give people answers, and sometimes that deals with the current event, such as who's running for president. Mm -hmm. In fact, in the coming year, I believe that's going to be a lot of conversation. So be ready, and I think that's the key for us. Eric, I remember you have a DVD out on New Age or Not. Give me the title of it again. New Age or Not, What Difference Does It Make? And it dealt with Mrs. Clinton and some yeah. of the things we've talked about here. And that's at ericbarger.com. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just continually amazed. Folks, we do segments here on the paranormal all the time. And it's because the paranormal is getting so... in the White House, for Pete's sakes, my goodness, the highest office in the world, not just the land, the highest office in the world... That's going to be the role for the Antichrist. And I really question if God's even going to allow that before he allows the Antichrist to rise to power. I think that's one reason Hillary Clinton was not elected in 2016. God said, stop, we're not ready for blatant occultism in the White House quite yet as the number one figure in the entire world. The Antichrist has that role. Absolutely. And I think this whole thing with Marianne Williamson and the rise we are seeing of this incredible occult power should trigger an alert in the Christian church that we are going to battle in a big way. These are the end times, the last days. There is all kinds of fake doctrine out there, and it's laid as traps. They become traps where people fall into them. And this is life or death, eternal life or death. And we are called to battle against the lies that Satan is planting there in the last days. Folks, come on out. 
Meet some folks next weekend We're just outside of Minneapolis. Meet J.D. Farag, Dr. Robert Jeffress, Samir Sarfati, Pastor Jack Kibbs, yours truly, Eric Jill, all will be there, Lori Cardoza Moore. We've been kind of promoting this for the last year. Looking forward to meeting some of you for the first time. I think we have attendees coming from at least 47 different states, six Canadian provinces, and several foreign countries. Looking forward to meeting some of you who are listening right now, next weekend in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, Grace Church, Eden Prairie, Minnesota, Saturday, September 21st. We start at 8.45 a.m. All time is central time. Streamers, again, it's all central time. So keep that in mind, and particularly if you're in another country, keep the time zones in your mind. We've referred to this topic today, folks, because the hour is very late and the enemy is working overly hard. He's deceiving and deluding people. And if you can make people accept a demonic philosophy, score one for our adversary, the devil, who is roaming about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Don't let him devour you. Listen to the words of Psalm 91, 4. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Run to him. Run under the feathers of his wings. You'll find safety. You'll find refuge. I want to thank you for listening, and we'll talk to you next week. We are the broken. You are the healed. Our annual conference is next weekend, just outside of Minneapolis. If you have a ticket that you cannot use, please call the Brush Fire Agency and alert them so others may use the tickets. Call 1-888-338-5338. That's 1-888-338-5338. A reminder that CDs and DVDs of the event will be available in late October. We'll give further information on this in a few weeks. Or call us at 763-559-4444. That's 763-559-4444. Watch our website for further announcements. Olivetreeviews.org. That's olivetreeviews.org. In the meantime, thank you for trusting Understanding the Times Radio and Jan Markell in an age of doubt, delusion, deception, denial, and even despair. Remember, everything is falling into place. Look up and know your redemption draws nigh.